Hello and welcome to Duelist Unity Movie Review Series, Episode 11. I am riding the wave and uh, getting more comfortable and, and less concerned with how it feels day to day and just enjoying the process of of doing it. And through the lack of concern, it's opening up a lot more freedom to just kind of, I don't know, roll with whatever comes, knowing that it's it's going to keep going and just having faith that it is going to keep going. Um, and it's it's been pretty fun getting more and more used to the riding of that wave. And I am very grateful for the limitations that I've had in my lifetime or what I perceive to be limitations. And what I mean by that is I'm grateful that I didn't grow up as somebody steeped in materialism. I'm grateful I didn't grow up as an extension of multi-generational wealth to the point of never really knowing discomfort and never having the necessity to experience empathy for other people because of that isolation. I'm grateful that I've had to go through things the hard way. I'm grateful that I've been poor. I've great, I'm grateful that I've had to work hard. I'm grateful that I've gone through everything that I've gone through because it makes it easier for me to feel more connected to everyone else. And that changes my intentions in everything that I do. The reason I bring this up is because today's movie review is about John Carpenter's They Live. And if you haven't seen this movie, definitely go and check out this movie. It came out in 1988. It stars Roddy Piper and Keith David. And if you don't know Roddy Piper, he was an instrumental part of wrestling for the 80s and 90s and some of the 2000s. He was one of my childhood heroes and favorite villains from the WWF back in the day uh, because he was a wrestler. This is the only movie that I think he did make as an actor, and it's fantastic. And of course, it co-stars Keith David, who is also one of my favorite actors. I think he's one of the most underrated actors that exist in the industry. He's fantastic in everything he's ever appeared in, including all of the voice acting he's ever done. If anybody's ever watched Gargoyles, which was a cartoon from the 90s, Keith David was the voice of Goliath. He also did the voice of the cat in Coraline, as well as numerous other roles. The man is incredibly talented. And so to see these two men acting in this movie, which was created by John Carpenter and written with a specific purpose, was very exciting. So I'm very happy that I got to share this with Andrew. So Andrew, I'm curious, initial reaction to They Live? Uh, so, I mean, part of me is kind of surprised that it exists, that it didn't get taken down. Honestly, I think um, it, it's almost like and, and just before we get into it again, if you haven't checked out the movie, this is going to be chock full of spoilers. We're just going to dive into talking about everything that happened in it. So if you haven't watched the movie, I recommend checking it out and then listening to the review and, and kind of thinking about your thoughts relative to what we thought and maybe you know digging into some other insights um, as we go through here, but lots of spoilers. So as I was saying, part of me kind of surprised that it exists, like that it wasn't taken down. You see so many things these days that do point to this reality that uh, get torn down. And, and I think maybe it's that there was enough of a, feeling of a distance because they were able to turn the super elites into aliens that people don't necessarily see the symbolism as clearly uh, for how things are related to it today. Um, but yeah, just uh, saw a ton of parallels between it and sort of that uh, the alien humanoid species as being embodiments of the collective ego and there was a number of situations throughout the movie where you kind of see people getting pulled into that and then and then those who are not in it sometimes desiring wanting to be in it getting getting pulled into it and then those who are not in it kind of seeing it for what it is or at least being able to see it for what it is and i saw you know the uh the sunglasses is very much symbolic of appealing back of the veil of 
be it identity, be it ego, be it the illusions that we experience that we believe to be the truth, um, any of those things, just tons and tons of, uh, of symbolism. So definitely excited to get into some of the specifics of this movie. Absolutely. It's fun going back and watching this movie for me because I've seen it a few times before and it comes up very frequently when you're talking to people about conspiracy theories. Because, of course, it's very much pointing to what we can't see. But the tendency, of course, in this movie is to blame the elites or to blame some force outside of ourselves for what the world has become. And they really do a good job of that, I feel, in the beginning of this movie of really showing a world of inequality, a world where the game is very much rigged. And it's so interesting to watch the two main characters, because on the one hand, you have George Roddy Piper, who really hasn't given up on the system, despite being at the bottom end of it, despite having to work so hard, he still believes like, you know, I've just got to put in my hard work and wait for an opportunity, you know, it'll come. Whereas Frank, who's gone through hardship as well, doesn't have that belief. Yeah, he's still working hard, but he sees the game as rigged. He really does see all the odds are stacked against us, that it's for the rich and not for the poor, that the system itself is not equal and never will be. And so it's really interesting how they've come together, but they're both working hard and suffering through poverty. They're both staying in this encampment, basically like a tent city, like exists in a lot of places right now. So I really enjoyed how the movie started off by making this point about society about how it is so out of whack that there is this growing disparity between the rich and the poor, that there are more and more homeless people. And right from the start of the movie, like they don't pull any punches. I think one of the background announcements as George is walking through the employment office is that they are canceling food stamps and don't bother applying. Like they keep hammering on the fact that the world doesn't give a shit about anyone who isn't rich. And I thought they made that point really well. I think the most important part about that is that it's relevant to what we're going through. And it's been relevant since before we can remember. I mean, this movie came out in the 80s and they were struggling with that disparity then. We're struggling with it now even more so. It's been around for a long time because it's a part of this system. So I, I think that that was probably the most important part of the movie was the recognition that it's reflective of something that is happening. But we do have this tendency to want to blame and I think that that's where the movie was very clever in not getting shut down because they made it about aliens. They made it, you know, a kick-ass movie with a guy with a gun going around saying awesome stuff. Like I'm here to chew bubble gum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubble gum. I love that line, but that's the reason I think that movie stuck around is because I don't think it would have ever been deemed to be a threat or taken seriously, but it's the reason that it's also been so popular as an underground movie because it does make a point that's relevant but i have a question for you andrew because obviously we're not talking about aliens and i kind of alluded to what my interpretations of the aliens are in my intro regarding generational wealth and uh ongoing lack of empathy through comfort what was your take on the aliens uh yeah i i think for me it, it's similar um i think that it was and kind of as I alluded to is symbolic of the collective ego and our desire for, you know, more for me, not seeing the inherent connection that we have to everyone and everything in all of reality and the power of it, even to those who weren't in it. And I saw I know this is kind of getting ahead of, of things, but this was, I think, a part that kind of solidified this for me when they do drop into the portal and kind of see the uh all of the elites talking about and they're like all right our total income whatever they said exactly was like up 39 percent this year everyone gets 39 percent more money and everyone's just clapping and it's just like all they give a fuck about is themselves and making more money despite already having fuckloads of money they're still like 39 percent more as you know on on the other side of things there's you know bulldozing people's homes in at the start of the movie and then we see one of the former drifters involved in that real like despite seeing all of the issues with society 
as soon as he was given an opportunity to be involved in it, he took it because that's how powerful that collective ego is. It can suck you in at any point, no matter how much of the other side, how much of the the issues that are uh, stemming from that mentality are seen by you. It's almost like we willingly don't connect them. We, we because once we're in that position of deriving some benefit from the system. And, and so I saw that very much as symbolic of how things are now. Like as soon as someone, despite experiencing a lot of suffering, they start to see some success. They don't really turn back and look over their shoulder and be like, let's, you know, bring some back. There's, there's some inherent issues with this system. Like as soon as they start getting some success, it's like, all right, sweet. I'm uh, getting success now and, and making money. And this is what I've always wanted. And we, we don't connect the issues with the system and, and with everything happening to our situation once we get some success or start making a bunch of money. And so I saw that as just an embodiment of the collective ego and the power that it has for that. And I think there are m many embodiments of that, you know, be it, as you mentioned, generational wealth, people who never have to experience any discomfort. It's like they don't even know they're kept from what is known, you know, to experience certain degrees of discomfort in their life. It shows that, but it also shows how powerful it is and is that it can take someone who experienced, you know, the extreme of discomfort and they just don't even consider anything about the issue with the system as soon as they're given a little bit of taste of that type of life. Well, and I think it's really interesting because while that's true, especially for younger people who grow up with multi-generational wealth, the idea of multi-generational wealth kind of ties back to what we were talking about in terms of our episode on the Illuminati or secret societies and, and the Freemasons and whatnot, right? Like there are people who are not only aware that their divisive mindset causes pain and suffering in the world, they embrace it and they embrace it because it benefits them. Like they're well aware, for example, in the military industrial complex that they are perpetuating war. There are many investors who are well aware that investing in Halliburton, for example, would result in a lot of new projects after a war was created by the U.S. in Iraq. So there are there are plenty of people who are aware of their divisive mentality and aware of how to use it, and they really just don't care who they squash. And those, to me, are the aliens. Those are the aliens, the ones who are aware of their divisive mentality and its harm and are actively deciding not to do anything about it because it benefits them. And I think that that was the point they were trying to get across in the movie is that there are humans who are unwittingly going along with this journey. And then there are humans that are embracing it, who are actually seeing that divisive mentality and embracing it as well as the aliens, as well as those multi-generational wealthy people who have been profiting off of the back of humanity forever. There are those of us who are recognizing the game, getting in good with them, and all of a sudden getting all kinds of favors. And this is specifically going back to our episode about Freemasonry. Because what were we saying? What's the benefit? You get to rub elbows with a lot of powerful people, right? But all you have to do is swear secrecy. And so there are many of us that would, unfortunately, say, what's that? I can benefit and all I have to do is willingly hurt others and they, and we do it just because we don't want to suffer ourselves. And I think that's the biggest problem. And, and so I like how that came across and that that's the thing about that gentleman that was in the encampment with them who ended up being rich. He was aware of what he was doing. He was straight up happy about it. He's like, Oh, good to see you boys have changed your mind. And it's like, but they didn't, they're actually there fighting against the very thing that you're proud of encouraging and proud of being a part of and I, I really enjoyed that part of the movie but it's the deliberate divisiveness i think and it does seem so alien especially to somebody who practices or experiences empathy to any large degree right and i think 
I think it's really interesting because the glasses, right? They, they talk about the glasses as being kind of clarity as to what's really happening around you. And at one point, George actually says, wearing these glasses is a lot like being high. And once you take them off, the come down's real rough. And it's because that's what awareness is like. All of a sudden you're looking around at the world and going, oh, wow, this really does have some underlying messages. This really does have an underlying intention. And it seems deliberate, even though there are many people participating in it who don't know it's deliberate. And that's why I really enjoyed the messaging that you see when you put on the sunglasses, like obey, submit, reproduce conform follow stay asleep buy watch tv and my personal favorite work eight hours sleep eight hours play eight hours yeah it it kind of it doesn't it doesn't blow my mind that this was 1988 saying this because there was stuff saying this probably 50 years before that even and just the relevance to today and everything going on today is fascinating but it makes me wonder with the uh you know aliens and that type of mentality the knowing the the awareness of the destruction and the lack of desire to do anything about it or or the willing perpetuation of it kind of fascinates me and i know like you and i have talked about this how i i don't know like i i can get things quickly and, and see things clearly relatively quickly. And and the, the pitfall of that is that I don't necessarily see why it's hard for people to get it as well, you know, like not to certainly not to toot my own horn, because this is something that I'm actively working on keeping in mind as we talk about this stuff. But it's hard for me to grasp how people could see some semblance of this and willingly go against it, like still willingly not experience empathy. Like to me, it seems like the illusion of division has to be very strong in order to act in that way and continue to perpetuate that. Do you think there are people who recognize the illusion of division relatively clearly and still willingly do things completely involved in themselves don't experience empathy don't like see themselves in others and still say fuck it i'm still going to do everything to perpetuate this illusion and and do th everything for me just because it feels better in the short term to varying degrees, I, I think that we all have that temptation. I mean, right down to the spiritual teacher end. I mean, they may not be out there trying to conquer the world, but they certainly do stop at a point where this benefits me. And I'm just going to focus on that. True, I'm still helping others, but still there's an ounce of me in there. It may not be a lot, but it does stop the intention, or at least it slows it down, as we've discussed before. And yeah, the other end of the spectrum absolutely does exist there are people out there who will absolutely roll over you like you don't even exist to get to where they want to go we tend to refer to those people as psychotic but there are a lot of people like that and it's just because our environment caters to it it allows it to a very large degree and i know it's hard to understand because especially as a person who tends to be empathetic which you are. And it's one of the reasons that we love you, Andrew. There is a mentality where empathy is just a strategy. To even show empathy is just a way of getting yourself ahead. You don't see anything except yourself and what gets you further ahead. And in that mentality, tunnel vision really can cut you off from everyone. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so interesting to see how many quote unquote, of the wealthiest people in the world are actively engaged in shit tons of projects that really have no purpose other than self-aggrandizement, right? And that's why I thought it was interesting, interesting in the movie as well that, and I don't know if you caught this, the aliens at that banquet were thanking the rich elite humans and benefiting them because they were allowing the aliens to work on another project that was helping them 
in a multi-dimensional intention to do something else. So the aliens themselves had an intention and the humans were just a, a means to an end. They weren't actually helping the elites. They were using the elites and the elites were using the humans underneath them. And that's the whole chain of events. But we really do get cut off in tunnel vision. And the larger the project, the more important it is to us, especially self-defining, if we want to get control and happiness and become advanced and all that other stuff, the more tunnel vision tends to be there, which is the unfortunate part of tunnel vision because it's well-intentioned, but the road to hell is often paved with good intentions. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. And I, I did want to go back to the subliminal messaging as well, or I don't know if it's subliminal messaging or just you know, what you're able to see with the glasses on versus glasses off. And that goes back to the reality of the system being that we're it, like we push that system. And I think that's what those were pointing to was that, yeah, you know, you had the, the billboard of the woman on a beach and whatever. And it, it just looks like, oh yeah, I want a vacation. And then the, the underlying message or the message with the glasses on was marry and reproduce or something like that. And all the other ones were you know, the ones you mentioned, obey, you know, submit, don't question authority. All of those things are like the reality behind what's put on, you know, what, what's put in front of you, what you're able to see without the glasses. And, and so that is, those are like the the bases of the system, the roots of the system almost is that desire for, you know, the temporary cessation of the suffering you experience within the system is enough to keep you in the system. You know, you buy the new pair of shoes, you're obeying the system or whatever. You, you go on a vacation, you're submitting to there will it's just enough just enough of a taste of what life could be that you willingly submit to being back in the system and so i found all of those to be very fascinating they were just pointing to the reality that we are the ones pushing the system like as much in the movie as they blamed you know the aliens and all that stuff like it was all the humans that were desiring those things that were doing the things that were pushing the system. It's like you were talking about with uh, the vaccine and everything. People weren't willing to let go of their basic, you know, comforts. And so that's what allowed for people to not stand up to a vaccine that had been put out for a few months and like had no fucking testing whatsoever. And we were basically the guinea pigs for we were the guinea pigs. For it, they didn't give a fuck if anyone got sick, and now people are, you know, starting to see some repercussions to that. And it's like, yeah, no fucking shit. There's going to be repercussions to that, absolutely. And so, kind of going in that direction a little bit. Like, I saw a lot of symbolism with everything that happened during COVID, and and all of those things, and and you know, submit, obey, don't question authority. There were things I posted on my Instagram story back in like late 2020, early 2021 just of like a doctor who is a well-known renowned doctor saying like, Hey, I don't know. Like the masks may not do all the things that we thought they did. You know, the vaccine may not work in the way that we thought just like bringing some other things up for discussion. And it got flagged by Facebook or Instagram or meta or whatever company owns Instagram now that, uh, that like, this is, uh, I don't remember exactly what it said, but basically got flagged and, and it was it, it blurred my story so that people had to click like, I understand this may go against, you know, certain societal guidelines or you know whatever they said. It's like it was just a dude questioning the narrative. And so we're experiencing this. And I have people like in my life, friends who are like lean that way, who are just submit 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 don't question anything and it's fascinating like it it just happened to us the past couple of years this movie was made back in 1988 like we're experiencing this and people don't see the correlation i was having a talk with a friend recently about uh she had brought up handmaid's tale and i don't know if anyone's familiar or had seen that but it's basically this 
uh, society that gets taken over, it becomes sort of a state run thing with you, you can't really do anything freely anymore. And I was like, oh, yeah. And she was like, that's crazy. Like, I feel like we're getting close to that. And I was like, no, Australia kind of just experienced that with COVID. Like they weren't able to leave their homes. And she just like she didn't question anything about COVID. And so she was like, what? No, experienced like crazy cognitive dissonance. And I was like, wait, that just happened. Like COVID was basically that sort of thing. That was maybe not the extreme of that show, but it was it was on that scale. And she just like refused to have that conversation. I was like, it just happened. Like, what are you talking about? So it, I, I find it fascinating how it's such a, I don't know, it's it's able to infiltrate that type of mentality, obey, submit, don't question authority. As obvious as it, as it seems in a movie like that, once it gets put into a certain situation in our reality, people don't see it for what it is, which which I always find interesting. And I'm sure there's people who watch this movie who don't even see any symbolism. They just see it as, uh, oh, hope we don't get taken over by aliens. It's like, oh, my God, you're missing it. And they actually say it really well in the movie. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. We are focused only on our own gain. And that's very much it. But it's through that mechanism of tunnel vision, right? Obey, follow, it's all chase the carrot, run from the stick. So we're only focused on that narrow corridor in front of us or whatever's behind us. We're driven by fear and desire. And that keeps us in this state where we can't ever come to a point of awareness. It really is very difficult. And what I find funny is that when you do start to come to a point of awareness and you express it openly, it's practically like in the movie where finally one of the aliens noticed that he could see them. And right away, we've got somebody who can see us. And everybody comes out of nowhere to basically shut that person up and make him go away, right? Because you're going to ruin the game just by seeing it. And that's what I'm encouraged by, is the fact that this game, this system is so very fragile that it is threatened by clarity. That's it. So that means clarity itself is really the only important part of this, because that's what changes the system. You can't be driven by these impulses in clarity because they don't make any sense in clarity, but they do make sense in a state of stress and confusion, which is unfortunately what the system is also putting on us all the time in terms of bills, inflation, taxes, war, the, the media lying to us, so on and so forth. Like there's so much stress. No wonder we don't have any sense of clarity. And unfortunately, it's not as easy as just putting on a set of sunglasses. But nonetheless, clarity is the answer. And I really did enjoy that very simple message in this movie that all you have to do is see. And I wanted to cover this quickly because admittedly, one of my favorite parts of this movie is the epic throwdown between Roddy Piper and Keith David in the alleyway. And they worked hard on that scene. And you can tell it's really good, but I love the symbolism that despite the fact that Frank was skeptical of the system from the start, he was still hesitant and resistant to the idea of the glasses. He still fought back tooth and nail, despite the fact that he was suffering just as much as his friend was. And so finally, after fighting and fighting and fighting, he looks around and it's obvious. And I just love that scene because that's often what it feels like when you wake up and you're trying to tell people you care about. And it's so important to recognize that fighting them like that doesn't end up working. Unfortunately, in the movie, it did because it was just a pair of sunglasses. But in reality, that friend's going to run away and judge you. And so you have to come to the realization that empathy will help you communicate that clarity, that you'll do so in a way that doesn't immediately draw the eye of Sauron on you, right? Because you're doing so in a way that's that's human and empathetic and authentic. And I think that's the point that you can't just bully your way through this system. And I think that's where the movie again, masterfully camouflages itself 
as an entertainment movie because towards the end it really is just like all we have to do is take down this dish and that will end the intentions of the aliens and we'll all be back to normal and unfortunately it's just not that simple we really do have to dismantle this one bit at a time by dismantling the mentality that created it which is in us yeah absolutely the symbolism of that scene was Awesome. And yeah, I was, I was going to say, unfortunately, it doesn't, you know, fighting the people around you, you know, friends, family, talking to them about experiencing freedom and clarity doesn't work from, from forcing it, but it does point to at least, you know, we can point out in our review of this, that it, it really does come back to being that relaxed experience as we were talking about a few days ago, because you have to give them, it's almost like giving them a sample of what it would be like, like being a sample mentality for freedom. So how relaxed of an experience can you be? And as much as you know, the movie showed that, I think, as Ray said, that was a way for them to sort of pitch this as, as not as intense of a movie as it really was, because there was, you know, some goofy stuff, some fun uh, one-liners, a fucking... 10 minute fight scene just back and forth i was like i was sitting there i was like damn this is a long fight scene holy shit but uh i was like this must have been exhausting to go back and forth like this but uh good on them yeah and, and the symbolism i think really is not so much about you know beating someone into submission to see it but just the resistance to the recognition and just how much resistance there is despite experiencing so much suffering in your life and we see it you know when ray and i post videos on social media what we were talking about before this call like we'll post something that's pointing to freedom pointing to letting go of your shit experiencing a more i don't know free experience with less suffering and we still get tons of pushback like there's still so many people who push back on that despite letting go of it being one of the keys to not experiencing so much suffering in their life, they they defend the suffering. And that's what we saw with how much resistance Frank had towards the even the potential of seeing things differently. Like, that's what really fascinated me. He didn't even know what was on the other side of the lens of the glasses. It was just different. It was just uncertain. And so that's what he was resisting the potential to experience something different, even though it good chance it was a lot freer with more clarity, maybe less suffering could have been found through it. But uh, yeah, I found that fight scene to be very, uh, very symbolic and, and fun just to see. And, and I, it hit home for me because just talking to people about it, like how much pushback there is, be it people in, in person or on social media, but it really does, at the end of that road, come down to how much, how relaxed can you be? How much can you embody that state of freedom that uh, that's available? Because, you know, if you do start fighting someone with it, they're going to see you and be like, so that's that's what freedom is. That's what clarity is. You're you're pissed off and angry and aggravated and, and fighting everyone all the time. Like, why the fuck would I want that? And that's kind of the the bitch of it but once you see it you realize oh it really does just come back to me just comes back i don't have to change anyone's mind if they're willing to if they see you as a as a decent enough sample size to at least get them curious that's all you can do you can't force it because any any force just pushes them further away from any desire to want to be free because they see you as an example of freedom and and you're clearly still suffering so you have to be free in yourself. One last thing I wanted to cover very quickly, and I think it's very clever. I don't know if this was intentional or not, is the repeated use of the word they in this movie. They're always referring to they're in control. They're taking our freedom away. They have a plan, things like that. Even the movie is called They Live. But it's the perspective of they that is the divisive mentality disempowers us and i find it so very interesting because this movie is often brought up by conspiracy theorists and it's often brought up by people who feel disempowered by this system that because there is so much corruption we're doomed but the movie is really communicating that those in power 
are so divided from the rest of us that what they do makes sense to them, that it's the perspective of division that creates that isolation and that, and that selfishness. And so that's where that unfortunate impact on reality is coming from, is the perspective of they. And when we blame them, we are unfortunately still participating in that mentality because there is no they. It's all just I. Without empathy, we can't change this at all. As long as we're afraid of everyone else, we don't mind screwing them over for our own benefit. Yeah, and I think that's really what gets people. And that as much as sometimes I wonder like, how can you not see this? How can you not recognize this? What the fuck? Uh, like you're, you're pointing at me saying like laughing at me saying, Oh, you you think you're God. Like, Oh, it's all you. Oh, we're all, we're all one. Right. Uh, but there's so many things going in the way of that. And even the perspective of me versus them, us versus them, you know, the idea that there's a, a state to achieve a, a state of enlightenment, a heaven to get to that isn't here now that's it like the the perception of division isn't just between me and you it's between you and where you want to be it's between you and where you think you should be it's between you know them and and what you think they should be doing differently all of that it's not just you know physical illusion it's mental psychological emotional division you perceive it's all the illusion of division and so as long as you're clinging to oh it's them Oh, oh, they're the issue. It's like, no, it's you. It's all you. Always has been and always will be. So it can't be fixed through the perception of them versus you, through the idea that anyone besides you has to change. It all just comes back to you. Always. But you know, that that damned illusion of division. It's a real bitch because it comes up in so many different ways, especially, you know, in, in the mental, emotional, psychological idea that you should be in a different place than you are. And as you relax into that recognition that there is no other place, that there is no other period, it all just comes back to where you're at. How free can you be in yourself? There's no one to change. There's nothing to do other than free yourself. And through that, everyone becomes a little bit more free because they're all you. Isn't that interesting? The difference between peace and paranoia is the difference between you are life or they live. That's fantastic. And on that note, I think we're going to end this movie review episode. What a fantastic movie. Wasn't that a great movie, Andrew? Yeah, it was. It was awesome. It's like... It's a good one because like there's lots of goofy parts to it too, but the depth of the symbolism is fucking powerful as shit. So I'm I'm very glad we uh we got this one in. Likewise, likewise. I know I mentioned it to another member of our community last week that we were going to be doing this movie, and he just laughed because of course he's around my age and we grew up watching Roddy Piper and watching They Live. It's been around for a long time. It's a fantastic movie. So Thank you, dear listener, for joining us for this movie review. I do hope that you have already watched the movie. If you haven't, I definitely hope that we have convinced you to do so. Thank you again for joining us. We will see you next time. Hi, everyone.